Excellencies, distinguished delegates, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, hello from New York. It's an honor to be the first president of the General Assembly to participate in this important event. I am disappointed that my schedule did not allow for me to be with you in person, to learn from your experience and hear your ideas for the future. I will start by thanking the African Union and its partners for inviting me to address you. I want also to acknowledge His Excellency Mr. Idris Debi Itno, President of the Republic of Chad, as well as His Excellency Mr. Musa Faki Mahamad, Chairperson of the African Union Commission. A further thanks to Commissioner Chergui and Under Secretary General Menkevius for the work they do to enhance African peace and security cooperation. This retreat offers us an opportunity to first remind ourselves that we simply cannot do without multilateralism nor without Africa's role in it. Second, to reaffirm the link between multilateralism and peace. And third, look to the future for multilateralism within and with Africa. So I'll start by asking a question. What is multilateralism and why do we need it? And I think a good way to define multilateralism is by looking at what it is not. It is not a system of every man for himself or every woman for herself or every country for itself. Furthermore, it is not a system in which agreements or alliances are made only by the rich and the powerful for their own gain. We already had this system. We saw the devastation that it brought to the world. Twice. And so we decided collectively to never have it again. It was this decision that led us to establish the United Nations as a bastion of global multilateralism. Multilateralism is strong within the African continent. Beyond the obvious example of the African Union, there are also many other mechanisms aimed at fostering intra-African coordination and dialogue. These include African regional economic commissions, sub-regional organizations, or institutions such as the Pan-African Parliament. Much of our multilateral work at the international level has also had a strong link to Africa. Most of the United Nations peacekeeping missions operate inside the continent. Much of the United Nations work in humanitarian response, sustainable development and human rights has also taken place in or in partnership with African countries. So, Africa is both a hub of multilateralism and a key partner in our global multilateral efforts. Turning now to the link between multilateralism and peace. I should begin by stressing that we do need multilateralism across the board. We need it in our response to humanitarian crises. We need it to advance sustainable development. And we need it in upholding and promoting human rights. It is not just a necessity in the area of peace and security. Today, however, I want to emphasize the link between multilateralism and conflict prevention in particular. Until we truly grasp this link and use it to make the world a more peaceful place, all of our other multilateral endeavors will be for nothing. The breed of multilateralism we need today is very different to that which we sought in 1945 when the United Nations was established. It must adapt to emerging challenges such as international terrorism, violent extremism and organized crime. This is particularly true for Africa, which has been forced to address these challenges head on. It is not all bad news, however. Africa has produced many good examples of global and regional multilateral mechanisms being used to prevent conflict. Here, I will mention the recent peaceful transition of power in the Gambia, which came after intense mediation efforts led by the economic community of West African states. 
Africa has also been using innovative ways to ensure its mediation efforts are more inclusive. Here I want to commend the establishment of the African Women Leaders Network and the network of African women mediators. Additionally, I want to focus on the important work of good offices and mediation. We have heard accounts of high-level representatives and special envoys from the United Nations, African Union or sub-regional organizations collaborating to prevent or stop conflicts. They have alerted us to the early warning signs of conflict, engaged with major political actors and designed multilateral strategies to prevent conflict or stop bloodshed. Many of you in this room have either led or been involved in such initiatives. And I want to say that I'm personally inspired by you all. We have also heard many positive examples of national or even local instruments for mediation or conflict prevention, benefiting from multilateral support. These examples are still few and far between, however. This means that our efforts must be significantly scaled up. Excellencies, the question therefore remains as to how we can strengthen this triangular relationship between global multilateralism, African multilateralism and peace going forward. We have much to do. Frankly, we need more and stronger partnerships between the United Nations and the African Union and other regional and sub-regional mechanisms. We need to ensure that our efforts to move the United Nations from a model of conflict response to conflict prevention are driven by best practices and lessons learned from mediation in Africa. We need more retreats like the one today to hear real stories and experiences from the ground. And we need to follow these up with concrete agreements, programs and initiatives. In April 2018, I will convene a high-level event on sustaining peace and conflict prevention in New York. I hope that it can act as an incubator for many of the ideas and innovations you come up with on this retreat. I'll be in touch with many of you to see how best we can facilitate this. Some of you on your return to New York and others during my trip to the region in December and early next year. In the meantime, I wish you a productive retreat and I thank you again for allowing me to participate, even from thousands of miles away.